It all comes down to preparation, attention to detail, redundancies, redundancies, and redundancies. David Fincher's The Killer is my favorite movie of 2023. I understand this is one hell of a claim to make when the year saw releases such as Oppenheimer, Asteroid City, Killers of the Flower Moon, and quite a few other bangers. What a good year it's been in an otherwise direly dour decade. I wouldn't be surprised if we all have different picks for the best, but I'll endeavor to articulate the case for why it was the best that the year produced and concordantly what I personally loved about it. At the end, I will rank it. This video will be completely spoiler-free, so much so I'm not even giving you a full plot synopsis. I have a second spoilerific video where I fully discuss the story, character arcs, and really the in-depth explanation for why I love this movie the most. So please, once you've seen the movie, do give that a watch and let me know your thoughts. I went into the movie with high expectations. I gave the trailer only a cursory peek, as I often do since trailers always betray the movie's third act, and I found it to be a simple mood establisher. Here's the look and feel, Fassbender giving a great performance in a movie about a hired killer, directed by Fincher. I was like, sign me up! <laughs> I can only think of two other instances when such personal hype was met, but I won't speak of it at this moment. It would be bad tactics. Okay, on the direction. It will utterly shock you to hear that David Fincher does an amazing job. Not a single cut broke or stressed my attention span. Camera work emphasized the performance of his actors or compensated for their lack of it. Violence is focused, out of focus, out of camera, sudden, held back, displayed in full. The decision flow of how to show the action kept me on my toes, my expectations tensely distrustful not only of the direction of the plot, but of the actions being taken by our protagonist who repeatedly decides whether to murder or not everyone in meets, and how. Every location is thematically atmospheric, brought about by sets that are meticulously prepared to convey the attitude of the protagonist and the characters he meets in it. From the barren hotel room where our killer lives a life deprived of rest and relaxation in order to set up a long-distance kill, to the cluttered spacious abode of a dishonorable savage killer that he needs to tussle with like an animal, to the pristine nobility of the wealthy restaurant of choice of a senior career woman that he needs to outsmart and quietly rub off before she does him. They all get matched with the character when you think of them, like a different ecosystem that our protagonist has to navigate through to carry out his hunt. On the performances, Michael Fassbender is a perfect cast and comfortably proves he can carry a movie. Surely he needed no notes in playing the German tourist disguise. While Tilda Swinton also marked me for reasons I'll discuss in the spoiler video. I also like the very impactful performance of Carrie O'Malley, We'll dive deeper into all of that in the second video. And that's it, I'm not gonna say it again. <laughs> the rest of the cast was serviceable, offering performances that succeed in never breaking the immersion, though this might change if I decide to pay too much attention on repeat viewings. Far as the music is concerned, it was scored by the great Trent Reznor of Quake fame. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's his most popular work, no? It's definitely not a soundtrack I'll listen to on its own, like I do The Lord of the Rings or Star Wars, but boy, the man can really produce a sound that gnaws at the subconscious and meticulously plays the listener's nerves like they were just another instrument. My only criticism is that, again, doesn't work as well when listened solo. Getting him to score for thrillers is a no-brainer, although that's hardly been the case if you look into his IMDb page. His previous movie was Muted Mayhem, yeah, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Quickly on the sound, I will hardly ever mention sound effects for movies unless they're bad, but here the sound work is just freaking phenomenal. There is sounding out of place, and then there's this, sounding more in place than if you were to put my ears in the middle of the action. I made a short clip to emphasize how great this movie sounds, and I'll leave it at that.
Hopefully I did a good job there. On the action. The action is well thought out, choreographed and executed. From the vicious brawling between two highly proficient violent killers to the unilateral execution of civilians, nothing looks off. It doesn't have exaggerated brutality, but it also doesn't shy away from indulging in it. However, this is not John Wick being run over by trucks and being fine. Getting punched is a big deal and stabbed practically a death sentence. And our professional hitman does his best to avoid all of this and does not come out unscathed when he fails. Not by a long shot. <clears throat> On the script! Again, I will not spoil the plot direction or what I believe we're supposed to take away from the story, but I can touch upon the themes and intentions a little bit. The story is credited to three blokes because two of them are the authors of the graphic novel which this movie adapts. In case you weren't aware, I sure wasn't, The Killer is a French graphic novel written by Alexis Snowland and illustrated by Luc Giacomo. I'm sure that's how you pronounce that, right Luke? <clears throat> All the respect to the authors, but we're just covering the movie, particularly because I haven't read the work in question. Anyway, the screenplay was by Andrew Walker of Seven Fame, and also Sleepy Hollow. I personally found the story very compelling, and the premise of a hired killer going after other hired killers is always fun. I thought his methods looked believable and expertly well thought out. Just all the ideas of how a man like this would operate, I thought were very good. From yoga exercises to the use of modern technology, to a plethora of identities and the ability to kill anyone. Heat is famous for that quote about dropping everything, but you see this character actually doing that with almost anything he uses in his operations. Phones, of course, but also gloves, bikes, bodies, houses. I thought that, in this respect, the movie left no loose ends. The monologues are well written and some quite clever and introspective. Everything informs on the character and nothing feels self-indulgent or propagandish. Well, Let's not rub the knob too much. There's a couple of lines that do seem off kilter. What are you doing? Living amongst the normies. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it was very rare and nothing truly egregious. Didn't take me out of the movie or got me not believing in this character. As far as stories about Hitman go, this one stands pretty unique, I think. I can think of a movie with a similar enough premise, execution or conclusion to even compare it to. This is the story of a career veteran murderer for hire, utterly dehumanized by himself, first of all, discovering his humanity through a series of events which start with the most human thing a person can do. Air. 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 My accent kind of ruins this, this setup. I'm talking about making mistakes. He makes a mistake. It starts with him making a mistake. The story is about burnout, aging, the waning of one's finely crafted skills despite efforts and thus expectations to the contrary. The acceptance of that. Retirement. It's not the story of an anti-hero or a tale of redemption, nor does it really count on romance to carry it through, so if you expect any of this to be the case, rest assured. Or, I guess, be disappointed. We see a man unmade by an existence predicated on inflicting brutality upon others, remaking himself throughout the movie. We watch a man who set himself apart, putting himself back together. From one of the few, he becomes one of the many, and needs to accept that. And that's what I got. Time to rank the movie. The way I rank my movies, or will rank my movies, is on a grade scale, optionally with a subgrade. Same way you can have a B or a B plus. From great to bad it goes must rewatch, which would be an S. And then we have must watch, can rewatch, can watch, should not rewatch, should not watch, do not rewatch, and do not watch. Which I call trash grade. I rank David Fincher's The Killer as a must watch, can rewatch. That's an S minus. You should really give it a chance as it's a seminal work by Fincher and an absolutely superb performance by Fassbender, based on a pretty unique story in the genre, all things considered. If you like it, you'll be able to watch it again to catch new details or to enjoy it again once enough time has gone by. Quite honestly, 
as conclusions go, if not for mentioning Fastbender, I could pretty much be talking about Seven. I do like this movie way more though. Alright, thanks for watching my video. If you decide to follow my suggestion, I trust you will not be disappointed. See you in the discussion video. This is Kuscopia signing... See you in the discussion video. This is Kuscopia signing out and about to sign in in a discussion video. You will see me there. See you soon.